Let's bring our panel back in. Goldie Hyder here in Toronto and Rana Ambrose in Calgary this afternoon. Uh, Goldie, you were looking for um, any updates in terms of uh, on the Indigenous spending front. Um, were, did you see anything there? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think yeah. that at best is maybe we're, we're going to look at it one more time. Uh, this was something that the Indigenous community, the leadership across this country have been asking for, uh, to have loan guarantees so that they can have equity and investments in uh, projects in this country. Rumors in Ottawa for some time now, Jacqueline, have been that that program is coming, but that it will exempt any investment in, in, in the fossil fuel sector, in the energy sector. I, I consider that personally as an extension of colonialism. I mean, this, it is their land, it is their, their assets, they should be allowed to do with it what they want. And we hope the government is hearing that message because it's a message coming from the Indigenous communities themselves. I just simply believe, and our business community certainly supports that in principle, we would hope that they would get moving on something because this is the kind of thing that spurs jobs and spurs investment where you don't need to spend billions of dollars, you're just a backstop. Uh, and that allows businesses to have partnership with the Indigenous communities. And there's many examples of where that's happened and it's working very well, Coastal GasLink being amongst them. Rana, was there anything else that you'll be looking out for when you get a chance to go through the whole document in here um, that that you haven't heard about just yet. Yeah, I mean, I think that that it does sound like I'm hearing rumors that the government, to, to um, Goldie's point, will allow oil and gas projects to be part of the Indigenous loan framework. And if they do that, to, to Goldie's point, that is empowering. Um, and that is giving the Indigenous community the autonomy to make the decisions about where they want to invest their money. And the reality is, is that if you look at natural resource projects across this country, adjacent to almost every one of those natural resource projects is Indigenous communities. And so there's a huge opportunity for them to participate in the revenue sharing and the development of these projects. So I, I understand that's something that's coming and it'll be in the next budget. And I think that's very positive for the Indigenous communities. Rana, when you're thinking about this fiscal update as a whole, um, how, what, what's sort of your big takeaway from it all so far? You know, the big takeaway to me is that this government is not managing fiscal policy. They're managing for a political outcome. And it's because they are, you know, they're pushed into a corner, a political corner. They're, you know, they are really low in the polls. A lot of their own supporters are upset with them because they're not managing the economy well. The NDP is, you know, has their, um, you know, their fortunes in their hands. And if it wasn't for the NDP, we would be going to an election and they would be facing an electorate that is not happy with this government right now. So when they say, you know, when this government has these projections about um, bringing the deficit down over the next six years and moving towards a balanced budget, I just think it's disingenuous because we know that an election is coming and the NDP is going to ask for a lot of money and spending to support these liberals. So politics are, are is what it is what it's play here and not fiscal policy. And I worry about that because at the end of the day, Goldie said it perfectly. You know, it's boring to talk about um, paying off the deficit and bringing our debt down and getting our fiscal house in order. But the truth is, is that if we don't do that, regular Canadians, vulnerable Canadians are going to have to see cuts in programs that they rely on. And no government wants to do that. Goldie, what do you think of the uh, the political pressure that the, this government is facing right now? I think what we have to be careful of here, you said big, big picture here. Yeah. I'm concerned about our political environment, not just in Canada, in democracies now, that is getting very cute when it comes to market interference. We have to be very conscious of this development in our democracies because when you talk about investor confidence, that's one of the things that they're counting on is that you're going to stay in your lane and we get to stay in our lane. Set the rules and get out of the way. But the idea that, that more market interference and sort of gerrymandering, you know, interfering in competition, interfering in this, there's a, there's, a, there's a real possibility this ricochets into the exact opposite direction. We get less investment, less jobs, less market confidence, and, and, and prices actually end up going up instead of, uh, instead of coming down. I look at the example of of uh, the RBC transaction with HSBC. The idea that something already approved by the Competition Bureau will now be discussed in Parliament. What? <laughs> Where are we if that's the way we're going to be managing our economy? And I think we have to get very serious as a country uh, to realize that there's consequences for this kind of short-termism and this kind of cute political behavior happening in all, all as I said, all around the world in democracies because capital is mobile. And unfortunately, uh, there's a hard way to learn that. I'm hoping we can avoid that.